Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Those of you on TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook platforms, I am T. Clay. Walk with me through the book of Jubilees, yes. And we're in chapter 3 of the book of Jubilees. Let us pray. Oh, most holy, Sanini, Nanini, even Tata and Zambi. The great I am, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for all the things that you've done. We thank you just for being with us in this day, this great day and time. Yes, we thank you for being, that, the, that you're on the way, on the verge of delivering the Congo. We ask you to strengthen those armies that, that really are just for their, their, their villages or their cities and those things and those who've gotten rich and it's secretive and sitting back and causing all kind of havoc with their armies and their militias secret militias while they strip the country bare, their own countrymen. Yes, and those of other places that are Im implicated in the degradation of the Congo. Yes, even the government forces there that are against and trying to strip it of all the things because of the lucrativeness that the West and those countries that use those resources have gotten. We pray that we pray for their victory. In one way or another, we ask you to give them victory. Send your angels in their time of battle to defeat their enemies. That even those who pay that will not have no one to fight for them or no one to take it. Cause their equipment to malfunction, even the UN copters and all these things that are used to daily strip the Congo of all its resources. And we thank you and we give you the most praise and glory, even for their deliverance. Yes. And we thank you for ourselves that we might even love not our lives even to the death. Yes, we can fight so much for the things that we see, our little homes and all this, but yet we have this life here. You've given us much, but we don't manage it right. You've given us, some of us, you've made rich, but we have used it for our own lucrativeness and our own lust, our own things that we should not be doing, even against your law, statutes, commandments, and your judgments. Oh, most holy Sanini Nanini, we ask you that we might cleave to your law, and some have made up other laws through the New Testament in different parts that they say has disappeared and trying to get you to trying to get others to see that they might sin that grace may abound, even though it speaks contrary. Oh, we ask you that your law stand strong in our hearts, even to our salvation, and that we began to follow you as dear children, and as the children even of a Kobe, even Jacob. Yes, and we thank God for you, you, and you, and we thank God for all of you that have joined, that have been with us from the beginning. We thank God for all of you that have come in the midst, and some of you that have just joined, and you're going back, and you're just reading, and you're going, and you're trying to get this thing down and figure out what is going on here. And then you got to have those that's going to join, that have just tuned in and going to join, that says, hey, I like this. Let me go and do this thing because this is for my soul. This is for my eternity. Yes, yes, yes. We thank God for you. Yes, even you. And we give God the glory and the praise. Yes. And we thank you for all that you've done. We ask you to like the videos and it's not for any monetary or anything like that. It's just for that we might see, engage what is going on. Yes, share, subscribe, follow. Yes, that we might gauge this thing, that we might give the God, God praise for you. And we're in, oh yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Those of you on TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook, Platforms. We're in the book of Jubilees, chapter 3, and verse 1. And on the six days of the second week, we brought, this is what the angel of presence is saying to Moses at this time, according to the word of God, and unto Adam and all the beasts and all the cattle and all the birds and everything that moveth on the earth and everything that moveth in the water, according to their kinds, according to their types, the beast on the first day and the cattle on the second day, the birds on the third day and and all that which moveth on the earth on the fourth day. 
and that which moveth in the water on the fifth day. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Adam named them all by their respective names, and he called them what so, so there, that was their name. They understood Adam. You shall see that later. And on these five days, Adam saw all these male and female, according to every kind that was on earth. But he was alone and found no help meet. See, the Bible says help meet. This is an old English word. But you can take that word. It can mean the same in its context, suitable, a help suitable for him. Are you a help suitable for your man? Are you a help suitable for your husband, which is your man? Should be. But anyway, and the I am said unto, said unto us, he's talking to the angels of presence, it is not good that the man should be alone. Let us make a help suitable for him. See, this is, see, the other Bible that you have that been, they, they have picked and ticked and tricked and everything in it. And now we find these Dead Sea Scrolls and we find out that they're trying to use these things to manipulate you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Verse 5. And he says, And Sanini Nainini, our God, caused a deep sleep to fall upon him, Adam, Adam, Adam. And he slept, and he took for the woman one rib amongst his ribs, and his rib was the origin of the woman. From amongst his ribs, he built up the flesh in its stead and built the woman. See, the woman was not made from the flesh, from the dirt, from the sand or the dirt. No, it was the man made from the dirt. And from that which he made the man, he made the woman, according to this narrative. Yes. That other Bible don't give you that. I don't care. You can go King James all the way to Geneva. They don't give you that. But the, the, back, the fact is, is that it wasn't every man that God took the rib from. It was only Adam. How thick can we get? How thick can we get? It was only Adam he took the rib from. Adam was missing a rib. <laughs> now, if you go back and you find a skeleton or a carcass that is missing a rib, that is Adam surgically missing a rib. In other words, it was taken out of his socket. God can, anesthesia is, God is not, he invented all this stuff. He knows all these things. Now, every other man is given a certain amount of ribs just like Adam was, and that's the way they were born. Now, let's continue. Verse 6. And he awakened Adam out of his sleep on the awakening. He rose on the sixth day, and he brought her to him. And he knew her. And he knew her and said unto her, this is now bone of my bones. When he said he knew her, he didn't say he had sex with her. In other words, he knew that came from him. He knew her. This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She will be called my wife because she was taken from her husband. Yes, that's why you, you should always, woman, you should always accept a man that is suitable to you. I mean, that you all can agree with each other. A man should always get a woman that fit him, suitable for him. Suitable for him. The woman is suitable for the man, and the man is suitable for the woman. A help to the man, suitable for him. In other words, you all should like the same things, worship the same gods. I mean, just be one flesh. Many of us, many times, we have married the own the one thing some of us don't need to be married because we are too fickle in our minds some women we have though you have those bodies not we we me we men have those bodies too that we we think that we're all that in a cup of tea and then until a few years later when that stuff start going plop plop blam boom and and the face start getting crazy hey, some of you on tiktok seen the makeup challenge some of you are actually going to look like that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I hope not, please. <laughs> but therefore, in verse 7, therefore shall a man and therefore shall man and wife be one. Why? Because they married. <laughs> and therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife. 
I don't care if you have four wives, they're still wife. <laughs> oh, this is my wife. And then when you, when you have all of them with you, these are my wives. But she said, this is my husband. There is no law against polygyny. No, no law, no law. You can argue all you want. I don't care. Find it. And his mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Yes, one flesh. In the first week was Adam created, and the rib, his wife, the rib and the rib, his wife. In other words, the wife means rib. <laughs> in the second, according to his English language, yes, this is English now. We have to realize this is crazy. In the second week, he showed her unto him. And for this reason, the commandment was given to keep her, keep in their defilement. For the male seven days, and for a female, 14 days, or twice seven days. Okay, here's the reason. And after Adam had completed 40 days in the land where he had been created, we brought him into the Garden of Eden till it, to till it and keep it. But his wife, they brought his rib, they brought in on the 80th day. 40 days for Adam, then you got 80 days for his wife, the rib, okay? That was the only one that was made from the rib of man. <laughs> Come on here, the rest, it came out of her. She, she received the seed from Adam and nurtured all those things into a man or a woman. Now, his wife, okay? It says his wife, they brought it on the eighth day, and after this, she entered into the Garden of Eden. In other words, she was twice. He was 40 days before he went into the Garden of Eden, and she was 80 days before she could go into the Garden of Eden. Yes, almost three months, according to our time. And for this reason, the commandment is written on the heavenly tables in regard to, their, to her that give birth. If she beareth a male, she shall remain in her uncleanness seven days according to the first week of days. Okay, you, you go back and you add this up. And 30 and three days, she shall remain in the blood of her purifying. And she shall not touch any hollow thing nor enter into the sanctuary. Now you say, you said 33 days and then seven days equals what? 40 days. Okay. This is, this is where this comes from. Now, and she shall not touch any holy thing or hollow thing nor enter into the sanctuary until she accomplish these days which are adjoined in the case of a male child. Okay. Many of we don't keep this ordinance. We don't keep this. Why? We can. Why not? Some of us are ignorant of the fact, and some of us do know this. And if the woman knows, she would be willing to do it too. Because uh, you, you, sex ain't all that to that you're going to die if you don't have any. But in the case of the female child, she shall remain in her uncleanness two weeks of days. According to the first two weeks, and 66 days, add it up, it, it equals to 80 days. Now, in the blood of her purification, and they will be in all 80 days. Now, when she, in other words, 80 days after she had a female child, then she can go and praise God and have sex with her husband and all this other stuff. Yes, because he laid with her, he will be unclean. Yes, he will. Then you have to sacrifice the sacrifice. Now, there's a, when she's not, when she's clean, then all they have to do is wash and it will be unclean until the evening. Okay, according to the law. Now, these things still stand. You know, as you wash your stinking body after you get through copulating, and then you still unclean until the evening, Jacob, get it right before God. You're not going to die for a few hours of no sex. All right, now, and they will be in all 80 days. And when she had completed these 80 days, we brought her into the Garden of Eden, for it is holier than all the earth beside, and every tree that is planted in it is holy. Right now, that area is unholy because the heathen have trampled all over it. I'm not talking about Jerusalem. I'm talking about the garden area. Now, therefore, 
was ordained regarding her who beareth a male and a female child, the statute of those days, that she should touch no hallowed thing nor enter into the sanctuary until these days for the male and female child are cultures. That means a male child 40 days after she had birthed a male child and it's 80 days after she had birthed a female child. She shouldn't even go even where saints are even praising God. Well, it's taught. Give her a tape recorder. The husband come back and reiterate what was taught and what was said, yes, to her in, those, in that time. And this is the law and the testimony which was written down for Israel or Jacob in order that they should observe it all the days. <laughs> come on, him. He's not talking about some. He's talking about all. Some of you just want to wear fringes and your hair covered, and here you is sleeping in uncleanness. <sighs> well, we learning. Yes, we learning. Even myself, we all learning. Now, in the first week of the Jubilee, Adam and his wife were in the Garden of Eden for seven years, tilling and keeping it. And we gave him work, and we instructed him to do everything that is suitable for tillage. Yes. How did he learn how to plant? Angels. They taught Adam. The watches wasn't given yet. And he tilled the garden and he was naked and knew it not and was not ashamed. In the world, you butt naked. And they're just like a baby. A baby don't know. A baby is innocent. A baby, if you leave a baby naked, a baby will stay naked all his life. But that would be a bad thing because you'll see a trail of feces. <laughs> Some of it <laughs> and wet trails. <laughs> But anyway, and he'd still be laughing. <laughs> but anyway, seven years tilling and keeping it and give him work and gave him work, and we instructed him to do everything that is suitable for tillage. In other words, how to plant, how to grow, how to get seeds, how to collect seeds. And he tilled the garden and was naked and knew it not, and was not ashamed. And he, uh, so what? And what he said, and he protected the garden from the birds and the beasts and the cattle and fruit. And they, they knew what he was saying. Get away from here. Go, go, go. This is not for you. This is for me. I did this for my beauty, not yours, or the beauty of the Most High that walks through the garden. Now, and the beast and cattle and gathered his fru its fruit and ate. Adam ate. Put aside the residue for himself and for his wife and put aside that which was being kept. Now, after the completion of the seven years which he had completed, there, seven years exactly, and in the second month, on the seventh day of the month, the serpent came and approached them at the seven, on the eighth, he's saying after seven years, now after seven years was completed on the eighth year, here is the serpent. Now, Adam, he knew better. He had to teach his wife. I mean, this is just conjecture for me. Now, and the serpent said, to the woman, have God commanded you saying you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Whoa. Now, with that, we're going to leave it at this part of that scripture. When lust is conceived, now he's bringing about a desire. Learn the origin of sin. This is the scenario of the enemy, of every Satan, every demon, every temptation that should ever plague you or me in our lifetime. Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now he's bringing doubt. And with that, we're going to say peace.